Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft Game Mode 4 G4 server. We're here over at the slime farm and believe it or not, something has happened. <laughs> that should be pretty obvious. Yeah, I logged in after doing some AFKing. Actually, I didn't log in, I sort of came back to the computer and I was standing in the middle of this water. I think I was pressed up against this wall here. I was very confused as to what had happened and it took me a while to figure it out. But first of all, let's talk about the good news which is that we have a ridiculous amount of slimes. I'm sure that's a lot more than when I logged out. There's a whole extra row here. That's odd. Maybe I just didn't remember correctly. But anyway, I was AFKing. I was standing around up here, and when I logged back in, I was down the bottom, and it took me a while to figure out what exactly had happened here. Now, obviously, there's been an explosion. My first thought was a creeper, but then I thought, no, I was standing over here. How could that on earth have happened? And then after a while... It came to me, exploding bats is the problem. Yes, they spawn up there in that dark room, then it flies down towards me, and even though I'm technically not in the same space as it, you know, it's on the other side, um, it explodes, and the way it does that is by creating a creeper that's about to explode. So, obviously it came down close to me, the player, and exploded, and that means that we've got to make a modification here, so it should be... Pretty simple. Oh my god, it's a big one, and my sound is turned off from where I was AFKing as well, which is probably a good thing, because those squishy noises are a little much. Apparently I left that open over there. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so if we just put a few torches up here in the ceiling area, it shouldn't affect the spawn rate of the slimes, and uh, it should also stop those exploding bats. So next time I do some AFKing, it should all be a lot better. And finally, this thing is fixed. Wow, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. You know what? That explosion did a ton of damage. So much more snow was removed than I thought. And also, loads of these signs right here were blown off as well, which kind of sucks. But we finished it now, and let's just hop up here and see what the damage is like. It's all repaired, and we got some torches up the top there. So hopefully that won't happen again when I'm AFKing. And I do believe the spawning condition from bats is based on what block is directly above them. So there has to be a block above them and then it's the light level there. So if it's a lower light level down here, I don't think they can just spawn in the middle of the room. It has to be below a block. So with all of that ceiling lit up, we should now be good. We might also want to put a torch over there. I think I'll uh, play it safe and put some over the back of that side as well. But there you go. And we're done. We now have a ton of slimes. That means we can move on to doing our next project, which still involves the mob spawners, but we needed um, a load of slimes and slime blocks for that. So I'm going to craft these all into slime blocks, which will take me a while because there's quite a lot of them. Um, but then we'll be able to start work on this second project, which I think we're going to do somewhere between this place and our storage area over there. I think I'd like to expand our base in this direction, just so, you know, as you're walking back and forth, at least everything sort of in the same area if that makes sense but anyway I'll get prepared and I'll have something to show you soon so our new mob spawner farm is going to go over here and we're going to be doing a lot of work with these things now because we can farm all of the different mob types using them but this first one is going to be for some of the most common hostile mobs and it's going to be really interesting believe me uh, but let me quickly run over some of the setup that we're going to do right here so first of all this is going to be for creepers skeletons, zombies, witches, and I think pig zombies and blazes. So six different types of mobs, if I counted correctly there. And uh, you might be thinking, well, how are we going to put them all into one farm? That is the really cool thing. But first of all, um, this is where the mobs are going to fall down. We're going to have our mob spawner back here. That means we can sort of stand around in front of where the mobs land. And we're going to do an elevator setup. It's pretty traditional. It's pretty much the best way of getting them down to one hit. We're also going to have a crusher system as well. So we can automatically kill them. So you've got either one hit if you need to kill them for whatever reason. Or, you know, automation using crushing and pistons. So all of that should be pretty straightforward. There's a random snowball on the ground. I think something might have blown up here. Ah, my volume is off. Okay, so while I was working in this area, it looks like something has blown up because all of that has fill, uh, was filled in a moment ago. So those bats are really dangerous. Got to watch out for those. Um, and especially inside here, we've got to light things up. So one of the things that I want to do is uh, have some glass. We've still got that inventory glitch going on. Um, I want to have some glass around this area so you can see through this all the way back to where the mobs are spawning, which I think would be uh, a really nice touch. So that's why we played it out like that. But as you can see, we got slime blocks. You may have guessed that that was going to be an important part of what we're doing. In the middle of this room, 
we're going to have a pillar that goes from where the spawner is all the way down and it's going to be of slime blocks and then from down here what we can do is push these slime blocks upwards and they're going to make the minecart mob spawner because we're going to keep it in a minecart on top of it fly up into the air and that means we can make a contraption in the ceiling that's going to collect the minecart and store it elsewhere so that means we can swap minecart spawners around and then they can share the rest of this trap so we could be doing creepers one day we get loads of gunpowder and we're like right now we need some redstone so let's swap over to the witches and that means that we can uh, yeah, use this slime block to push the spawn up into the air, into the ceiling, and then swap it out with another one which can drop back down on top of this thing. Now I've already tested this and played around with it a little bit in creative and it worked ever so smoothly. It was literally like the first thing that I tried just worked. There didn't seem to be any finicky fiddling around with getting it to do what it should do. And so I think this is going to be relatively pleasant. But first of all, we're going to set up the rest of the trap. And actually that'll involve setting up some of this because it's going to be down at where the water is, which is right here, that we'll have our piston wired up so it can uh, push the minecart up, up above, which is going to be some interesting stuff. So I better continue on with the building here so I can show you it. So I've made a bit of a mistake here. You see the spawner's going to be up there and I've got a feeling that standing out the front here you're going to be maybe a little bit too far away. I'm hoping that's going to be enough. And it might mean that we end up perhaps raising this a little bit. And then there's enough room here, which is why I built it all the way back here, to have some steps leading up. Because I don't think it's going to be too much if we are out of range. So that's one thing to consider. But you can see how I've done the water streams. Just going for something different um, than what we normally do. So uh, that from there to there is eight. And then one to the side to push them into the middle. And then we'll have a free wide elevator up there. And uh, yeah, let's show this thing in action then. So we've got some redstone to control it. The other side of that block is a redstone torch. On top of there is where the minecart is going to um, be. And then this is to power the redstone at the bottom. So a simple way of sending uh, the redstone down using slime blocks and the redstone block, which is pretty cool. So if we hit this thing right here, there won't be much delay. So we won't see it live, but that goes down and then it comes back up again. So if we go with the minecart and nudge this thing over. So this would be our spawner minecart. It's going to fall right on top of the slime block and then when we hit it like this or again even, there you go, it's going to come up again. So when it comes up, that's when we have a piston sort of pushing from the side. Put a block below, then put a powered rail there and then we can send it on its way. So we'll be able to call the minecarts and swap them over and stuff and it's going to be one heck of a fun project. As you can see though, we need to do some redstoning up here because all we have at the moment is uh, this little thing to hit. So we're going to have uh, yeah, some redstone to control it, you know, pistons to move the things around, and I'll give you a demonstration of that in action. And there's not too much else here to do once we've done that. It's basically building the mob evator. We also don't have any other minecarts yet, or minecart spawners, so I need to go find some at some point. And this thing is coming along well, but I have run into one problem, and that is the bats, like we discussed um, with the last spawn and we put some torches up the top there if we do that that's going to affect the rates of uh, particular mobs like creepers and stuff which need darkness so at the moment i'm hoping that i can put enough distance between myself and the bats that they won't ever explode if they spawn in here which should be okay and hopefully we don't have to learn the hard way um, that would be disappointing but anyway let's get that redstone up the top done and i'll show you in action Okay, so this is the magic that's going to make it work, and let's just press the button and see it in action. And up comes the minecart, and off it goes. And that's it. And then over here, we can have a contraption to drop it back down again. And then with this input, we'll simply just activate um, the one like that. Although now I think about it, you see, I spent a bit of time figuring this out. I'm a bit rusty on the redstone, so something simple like this, it did take me a moment. Um, but technically, we could just use this button again because it would still open the door. So when one comes back in, you just use the one input. Let's uh, press that and it falls down and you don't need that to you know, go over to the side, but it could still do that. And I was thinking about how we could rearrange this. We could simply have it so the repeater goes this way and then you have this powering it from this side, something like that. And then we could run two inputs in here because otherwise it's going to be a bit awkward to get the power to this block because we want to power it from down below where we'll have a control panel. Now this is what I plan on doing for this episode, this part of the redstone. What we'll need in the future is some sort of swapping system and storage system for all of the different minecarts, which is going to be 
uh, really interesting. But one thing you'll notice is that I've spammed a lot of torches up here, and that's because when they come up into this area, it needs to be really well lit so they don't spawn up here. And I think we're going to have to go a little bit crazy with these torches for the blazes and mobs like that. So we will have a lot of torch spam. It will be very well lit up in this area, but then the mobs won't be able to spawn. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be an awesome project. And I guess the next step is now to probably start um, the rest of this. And to begin with, you know, we don't even have any spawners. We'll just start off with one probably this episode. And then we can work on swapping them over on um, the other ones. But that's the mechanism right there. In theory, it works. And I can't see what would stop it from doing that. This room's going to be dark, so they can spawn up there. And for now, I guess I can cover up all of this. Although, I need to dig an alternative route to get up to that room up there. Um, that would be a smart idea. So the next thing we can do now is work on the elevator. And before you know it, it'll all be ready and set up for us to bring a proper minecart in here. And then we can actually use this thing, which is going to be a heck of a lot of fun. So I ran into a little bit of a problem with the water stream here. As I put it down, I realized that having a row of source blocks across the back was something that I overlooked. Because it then meant that the water was going to go down in a straight line onto this bit. So you can see what I've done here is just missed two source blocks. This one is the middle, and the one to that side is uh, is not. <laughs> and uh, yeah, by putting source blocks across the back there, it will come all the way over to the edge. So it means that it misses out these three blocks. And what we've done here is put um, the source block just there. And so it's going to push the mobs down. They can sort of fall into this area a little bit sooner. But all of the water streams, wherever they are, are going to push them down in this way. So that means that no mobs are going to get caught up in there. And I'm really glad that I was able to do that because otherwise we might have had to redesign um, a lot of the room, which wouldn't have been a good thing because we've done so much here. But there you go, a nice and quick, simple fix, which is awesome. And uh, now we can move on to the next bit. So the deal is we're going to have three layers of glass here. And now as I put it together, you can see with each layer, you kind of lose sight of the minecart itself in there. It's not very bright. The room is also white, that rhymed, <laughs> and uh, it's not the best really, is it? So I think what we're going to do is probably just swap this out for regular glass, which I do have some, yeah, I've got a fair amount in there, which isn't too bad. And yeah, that's unfortunate, I thought it would look really cool. Maybe we just have white at the front and then behind it we'll have the normal glass. That might work. So another quick update, it's done. This thing is finished, or at least our elevator is. And as I was building it, I was thinking, oh man, I kind of forgot that there was going to be water and signs in your way. So you can see, I think, somewhere around there, where I'm trying to point in the middle, where the crosshair is, is the top of it. But I think you'll see the particle effects from the spawner when it's active. So that's going to be our way of looking in and seeing what's happening. But we'll also see, you know, some of the mobs falling down and bobbing around. So it should look pretty good, but I like the front here. And now we have to go through the task of finding a spawner. So if we have a look at our Solves Probes book, you can see we're not in any position really. We could probably hunt down some zombies, but zombie spawners aren't too rare. But I need to find them in this area. So we could find a cave spider one and change it to something else. So if I go caving looking for them, and I don't have any luck and I kill a bunch of other ones, then we could do that. Uh, but we'll probably have to do that for the creeper, but we could find some skeleton and zombie spawners out there. You know what I'm talking about. So uh, it's another round of caving. I'm going to do some caving in this area, some exploration, and see what I can find. So we have gotten real lucky today. I was exploring in these caves, running into dead ends, and then I fought a zombie, and then another one, and another. And it felt like they just kept dropping in on me, and eventually I noticed this up here. There's a gap on this side, there was a gap on the other side, we found ourselves a zombie spawner. Not the most exciting of ones, but it will be one of the ones that we do need. Um, so you know how to do this. We've done this before even. And I was curious if this worked with a sticky piston, because I think we did it with a regular piston before. So we need... Well, that was poorly placed. And that's an ore block, but don't worry about it. <laughs> and, uh, and then we've got to put the piston facing downwards. And look at that. It doesn't work with a sticky piston. That doesn't surprise me. It was a regular piston in the picture. And there you go. We now got a zombie spawner. And Blood Moons have also been disabled. Yeah, they were happening like every single time you'd log on. There'd be Blood Moons all day long. So something's wrong with that. Um, was that the problem that they were happening all the time? Yes. Pretty much. I think I'd seen about five or six of them today. And I haven't been on for uh, especially long. By the way, in here we've also got a name tag. Oh, two of them. I didn't see the other one. There you go, XB's uh, been having them a lot as well. 
Uh, I'll come back for the other stuff later. So anyway, let's push this thing on its way. Let's hope it'll be another safe journey transferring. Oh man, that thing is going off. Not everything is lit up that well because, as you can see there... Oh, that guy spawns with armor on. That's like interesting. Also, effects from the Enderman who's hanging out down there. Um, something I wanted to show you. That thing has just rocketed off somewhere down here on the right-hand side. There it is. Behind that wall, I found another cave spider spawner, so that's something we can convert into a different one. I'm hoping to do a creeper one as soon as possible, so we've got to hunt down some creepers when we go caving. Uh, but there you go, that was really easy, wasn't it? So now I've got to transfer it over and up into the room up above. That might be a little bit tricky. Um, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> so we got the zombie spawner this far without a hitch. And I don't think we're going to run into any more problems, really. I have been thinking about what mob we could go for next to convert that cave spider spawner. And do you know what I could do is some gold. I was thinking that Pikmin would actually be a really easy one. Because you can go into the nether, make them aggressive, and they all come to you, which is really convenient. So that thing's in the right position. Let's send it down, which is this button. It might need a little bit more of a nudge. Please don't be anything else. <laughs> Let's press the button. Okay, maybe it needs even more of a nudge. That is kind of worrying because I've been testing this with a regular minecart, not a minecart spawner. And is it me or has it come over this way just a little bit as well? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now they should be spawning down below. Oh, this is awesome. This is the first time I'm going to see it in action, actually. And there we go. And that's interesting. That guy's got armor. And he's behind and he should get pushed over to the left, but he's... Probably trying to move against the water stream. I'm not sure. Are we activating it as well. I can see, I can see the particle effects. Yep, and you have to stand just here. If I take a step back, it's not enough. I think it's kind of hard to figure out. But they're coming down. We should see them rise up soon. And there we go. There's the guy with the gold. Awesome. It looks like this thing is going to work. By the way, it's most likely you'll see them on one side most of the time because the water pushes out at either end. So you'll see them on this side or that side, but probably nether in the middle. And that is cool. They're all coming down on the left. That's fine by me. They should be dropping down before long. Uh, let's just go back up there and check this whole thing. We need to break... Yeah, we need to break the line because we don't want it coming back out again. Let's just leave it there for now. So now we're going to turn it off. We press the button. And it didn't come back up. <laughs> That's kind of worrying because it looked like this thing pushed it over. I think it's uh, a delay thing. Let's just add a little bit of delay right there. No. Okay. I've tested this thing with the minecart, but not the minecart spawner. Oh, no. I think I've made a big mistake. Oh, dear. So I'm trying to make some observations here. If we press the button and quickly turn around, it looks to me like it comes up with the momentum, but it hits the blocks underneath. So it may be possible to fix this. I'm just not sure what blocks it's hitting, and I'm really not sure how we're going to get it out of there as well. So I think when I sort of pushed it in and then pushed it from this side, we've uh, put it in an awkward position so it hits the block on the way back up. And like I said, no idea how to fix this. I'm going to have to think about this one. So at the moment it looks like it's the worst. You can see I've taken out a lot of the uh, blocks around here so it should have no problem with hitting other blocks and it just doesn't come up high enough. Although it looks like we might be able to take these ones out as well. Let's take out just a few more to be 100% correct here because if it is hitting a block on the diagonal then that would be something that would affect it. Wait a minute, there's two of them there. Have I left the minecart on from before? <laughs> I've only just seen that. That, I'm hoping, is the issue itself, because then we could lower ourselves down. Not sure how we'd do that, but then if we break the one below, and I'd have to be very uh, careful not to break the one on top. Okay, it might not be all doom and gloom just yet. I have left the... Oh, that was so silly. Okay, right. Let's, let's go break that minecart. So we are good. I managed to get the spawner back up here. That is obviously a good sign. Let's press the button and give it a test. Down it goes, let's press it again. And proof of concept, there we go. It works, all right, that's amazing. So now what I wanna do is head over to the nether and see if we can kill ourselves a whole bunch of zombie pigmen. 
So the entire time I've been walking back and forth across this bridge down here, I never actually noticed that there is a blaze spawner right down there. And because we're so close to it, I've actually been activating that. That's quite puzzling that I've never spotted that before. Seriously, I've walked back and forth over this bridge a lot of times. I guess it kind of covers it, doesn't it? <laughs> and it's right there. So we can pick up a blaze spawner from down there. That's going to be a tricky thing. I'd like to have some fire resistance potions before we fight those guys. Uh, but as of right now, you kind of need an area with a big lava lake and then a landmass where lots of pigmen are going to spawn. And you know what? I can't see any. But we're really well geared up. I've got a good weapon. I've got a health potion. And I think what I'm going to do is literally just run around and kill these guys for a while. They're going to spawn everywhere. When they're aggressive, they're going to head towards me. I should probably make a little bit of an exit plan here, actually. <laughs> yeah, this thing isn't very safe, and if the Pikmin are on me right here, what we need is um, some security, really. So if I build up a bit of a wall around this, let's make it too high, um, then I can hop over the wall myself with a ladder, and the Pikmin will be stuck on the other side. So we've got like a safe exit out of this place. Um, I'm really glad I decided to think about this before I just ran off there. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to be running around and hunting Pikmin. <laughs> Okay, I've been slaughtering pigmen in the nether, so much so that we've gone over our limit here a little bit. And uh, also killed a few ghasts as well, and some slimes, so some progress there. But now we're going to do what we've done before, just wanted to do this on camera together. So uh, we've got the spawner there, that was a little bit risky. This area is nicely lit up though, we should have done this first of all. So if we click on here, we create the zombie pigmen egg. Awesome, and then we right click on the spawner. And yes, that's what I was expecting to see, because these guys can spawn in the higher light level. However, I plastered those torches down, and I was wondering if there was any way to disable it. So let's put down a lot more. This is kind of worrying, because we don't want those guys spawning up top where we have all of the tracks. And I know you can disable it with light for the blaze, but it looks like it's different for the pigmen. And uh, if we kill one of these guys, we can get them to come towards us. Here we go. Hi, <laughs> let's kill you all. And will any more spawn? That is the question now. Let's disable this down below. Hi, it looks like maybe they won't. Yeah. Ah, uh, maybe that's okay then. Maybe it was just a couple of spots higher up that weren't. But look how many torches you have to put down to stop this thing from spawning. So I'm going to... Well, I was going to hang around and make sure for sure. They did spawn over here to the right where we could possibly do with like a couple more torches up here. Yeah, we might have to plaster the walls with glowstone or something like that. But let's just let's just wait a little around a little more and see if it happens again. Okay, these guys spawned right in the middle of the light, which gives us a little bit of a problem. Sorry, when I meant that, I meant right in the middle of these torches. So they can spawn in any light level basically. And that is a problem. I thought we were going to be able to disable this. Alright, so we're going to put this one down in the farm for now, so we can start farming some gold. And let's nudge you all the way across and get you down there before any pigment spawn. Good stuff. Awesome. So, what I'm thinking now is maybe we can stop them spawning by having the spawn places only one high, which means they would have to put like glass so we could see, or just solid blocks above um, the, uh, the minecart spawner right there. So we'd have to build a system where there's little tunnels that store all of these and it's all in a one high area, including this bit here, which might be a little bit tricky, but you can see... I mean, I think what's going to be tricky is that once you make it one high, it's going to be a pain to come in here and change things or fix things, but it should stop them spawning. So that's something we're going to do in the future. And another guy spawned down here. They're spawning all over the place. Let's go and see. Yep, look at that. It's working. And by the way, a couple of the mobs have fallen down from here and actually died, which is strange because I measured it out in a test world, tested it, and we might have to lower the area up there by one block. But for now, I'm just going to hang around and see what these pigmen do. So I load it by one. These guys should be one hit kill. Or maybe not quite. Do they have an armor value like zombies do? I'm not sure. 
I need to go look it up again because my memory is terrible remembering all these different things in the game. But that's awesome. We're going to be able to get a lot of gold now. And also, we probably need a looting sword as well. That would be a good idea. But yeah, we've uh, taken another step forward with our project. And we've also found out we've got a little bit more of a challenge than we thought we had because we've got to prevent the pigmen from spawning up the top when they're in the storage area. And if we stand just here, you can kind of see the name tag of the other one up there as well. That was kind of confusing me because I thought it had been pushed over to the side or something like that. But yeah, you can see the zombie one there. Pigsy, pig zombie one straight ahead of us. And now we have ourselves a gold farm. And that is a good place to end this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, if you have, please do leave a like. Your support is truly appreciated. But as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.